Welcome back. These have been sitting on my shelf for a while and I thought they might make for a cool video. I'm not too familiar with the game, but the minis are neat at least. Today I think we're gonna paint Orenstein and Smo and the Titanite Demon. But we also have a gargoyle and stuff if we wanna come back later and do those. Going into this, I knew the Titanite Demon would be really easy since he's just kind of a stony looking guy. But I was pretty worried about the other two. I've never painted gold armor before and I know that yellow can be kind of tricky sometimes. But hopefully since it's more metallic, it won't be too much of a problem. Let's go clean these up and uh, we'll get started. So the first step is getting these guys off their bases. I'm pretty sure they came like this and I didn't glue them on here, but either way they need to come off. If you want to know more about the cleaning process on a miniature, you can check out my Deathclaw video up on the top right. In there I cover building a miniature from a sprue, getting rid of things like mold lines, and then also cleaning it up so you get rid of any oils that might be left on the plastic. But yeah, once these guys are all cleaned up, they're ready for priming. So for this one, I wanted to try a new technique. It's called Zenithal Highlighting. The goal is to create like a natural sunlight effect. So you just take your base coat, in this case they use black and red, and then you go over it in a much lighter color like white to act as a sort of a sunlight effect. Hopefully it looks cool in the end. We'll see if it even matters though. And here they are. I think they turned out pretty good. We ran out of red spray paint, so I'm kind of glad I decided to do this Zenithal Highlight thing in the first place even if it doesn't end up working out. First step is Balthazar Gold. I know it says gold, but in reality it's more of like a bronze color. We're gonna use this as the actual base coat. You'll wanna cover both Orenstein and Smo completely in this. Try not to hit the hair if you can, but if you do, it's no big deal. We're gonna go back over it anyway. I go back over the hair here in red, but you might want to wait until later. I end up having to do it again. And here's Orange Dean all base coated. Next we're going to put some Agrax Earthshade on pretty heavily. It took me at least two coats, sometimes three in certain areas to get as dark as I wanted. All right, so this Liberator Gold is going to be our actual gold color. And to apply this, we're just going to do a simple dry brushing technique. To do that, you just put some on your brush and wipe as much of it off onto a paper towel as you can. Once you've done that, just make sure you kind of dust your miniature with your brush and only hit the raised areas. And with these guys, we're going to do it all over pretty much. So the only areas that aren't going to be hit by it are like the deep recesses.
All right, this guy's super easy. All you gotta do is dry brush the lead belcher on him. In the game, he looks like he's made out of stone, but I believe it's supposed to be some sort of metal material, maybe. So to tone down the metallic look, we're gonna do a couple washes of shade. I use mostly known oil with some Agrax earth shade kind of mixed in. Kind of gives it a weathered look. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You could go back and dry brush some highlights on it, but I didn't. I think it looks fine for the tabletop, so I left it where it was. Now that they're all painted, we just gotta protect them. There's a little can of gloss varnish I'm gonna use on all of them, and then I'm gonna show you how to touch that up. All right, he's all nice and shiny now. The next step is to take this Vallejo matte varnish and brush it on the areas that you don't wanna be shiny. In this instance, I'm doing it on the hair exclusively. Since everywhere else is made out of metal, we won't have to do much here. Titanite Demon is a little different. Since I don't want it this glossy, we're gonna have to do it more all over. I do want a few areas shiny though, so we're just gonna apply this sparingly in more random areas and hope it looks good in the end. All right, now we do the base. Since the X on the base is used for movement in this game, we have to keep the base pretty simple so you can read it. So all I'm going to do is put some earth texture on it and spray paint it black. For the base coat we're going to go for this storm vermin fur gray color. For terrain I use this larger brown wash from Vallejo. It doesn't look quite as pretty as the Agrax Earthshade, but it's not as expensive and you get a lot more of it. But if you only have Agrax, that works too. I'm sure most people just have that anyway. And finally, I just went back and dry brushed some more storm vermin fur onto it. Now we just gotta glue them on. When you paint the mini and the base separately, you run the risk of creating a frosting effect when you try to glue them together. So be careful of that if you use too much glue. If it does happen though, you can always just paint over it with uh, whatever steps you used before to paint the base. And here's some grass tufts. These are completely optional, but I think they make it look a little nicer. You can add as few or as little as you want. Let's do the reveal.
I was nervous about that gold armor going in, but I think it worked out okay. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing. I don't know. Could be cool. What's next? We got uh, drawing videos. A couple of those. And a couple model kits too. And always more miniatures for sure. So yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.